right, buongiorno. Uh, it's the next day, July 14th, 2022, and uh, yeah, a bit tired. Uh, it was pretty warm here last night, but we're gonna get a, hopefully not too late of a start, maybe 9 a.m. start, and start the big climb up uh, to the infamous <laughs> aid station where I actually dropped out and got a helicopter rescue at the 2015 UTMB. So we'll see those views. Another big day planned. It's gonna be a big one. Starting down here in Cormier, Italy, uh, climbing up, then we have to go down the valley, climb up again the Grand Col Ferre, which is the highest point on the UTMB course. Something I've never seen the views on because when I did finish in 2017, it was covered in, it was all foggy and rainy and snowing on top and you couldn't see anything. And I was lying down on the side of the trail in the downhill and it was really bad, but hopefully we'll get some views as we go into Switzerland today. We're gonna try to pull all the way to Champay Lock, which is gonna be about 29 mile day. Uh, so another really big day with a lot of climbing. Uh, what is that, like 48K? Uh, I don't know how much climbing, maybe 8,000 feet. I'm just guessing, we'll look at the Strava data. All right, gotta pack up, get out there. actually out of spring energy products and all my nutrition but I could buy stuff at the refuge hopefully seems like it's harder and harder to pack and it's heavier still though I don't know why I have no space all right so checked out of the hotel it's a nice hotel it's pretty expensive and uh check-in guy was a little a little rude to me it seemed like but uh no worries there we got a nice uh, leisure start here at 9.30 a.m. at the traffic circle where we left off yesterday. So this is start of day three, soft UTMB. Um, don't wanna get hit by a car here. Yeah, we'll just start here and we're gonna climb up to... All right, and we're off. I already got the poles out because it's a big climb. Confusing through town here. I already hit a detour, 200 meters in. We built these stairs into town, but they're doing construction on the stairs, so we're gonna have to go around, find another route. It's gonna be something like this. Don't wanna miss downtown. That's right. Yeah, I think so. I wanna run through here. And there's a track up this. I think. All right, so a bit of a road climb out of town here before we get to the trail. And both times the UTMB, my race fell apart right after this. But uh, it's just kind of runnable right now. It was not runnable during the race. I was also injured one year and falling apart the other year, so. See, we get up to Breton. All right, starting the dirt path. So actually, I was mulling over my service at that hotel. Sandy and I have stayed in a lot of great hotels in Cormier that were a little, well, less expensive and uh, a little more cozy, but people were so friendly and nice, but I don't know if that check-in guy was having a bad day or he didn't like my running gear or, <laughs> I don't know, but kind of, uh, we'll get up to the trail. We got some great views to cover today. So back in 2015, when I was first scouting this route, of course, without a GPS watch, I kept running straight up this road here, which is the wrong way. So we're gonna take a hairpin turn left. The trail kind of cuts the switchbacks on the road down lower there so big massive climb coming up here and uh it's probably gonna be a power hike grunt cracking tree line getting a view so it's a heck of a climb up it's short but it's steep and it's rocky and rooty and it's had a tough time in the race so 2015 
I was actually getting nauseous at this point. So I had fresh stitches in, but they gave me this powder antibiotic to take so my wound wouldn't get infected. And uh, it made me nauseous. But the thing that really took me out of the race was I realized my knee was swollen and I couldn't walk downhill anymore after this climb. Hence the helicopter rescue. Then in 2017, I was also nauseous at this point, but my race was just falling apart. And uh, yeah, it was all downhill from there. Not really, but figuratively. All right, let's get up there. Oh, I hope the refuge is open. Use a drink. All right, so, Panati out to Berton, and uh, this is the spot, I believe, where the helicopter landed and rescued me in 2015. I had trouble hobbling down this little downhill because my knee was swollen and I thought I'd do permanent damage. That is why I cannot finish that year. But uh, beautiful views all around. See Cormier way down there. Let's see if they're open. I believe maybe CCC goes this way. We're gonna go to the left though. Not a bad view. All right. <clears throat> See, I loaded up on some fluids there. And uh, is this hot? It's gonna be hot today. Great views all around. Whew. All right, it's a really beautiful flowy section of trail here. It's like slightly downhill, totally buffed out. If you have legs here, you could really start running after all that climbing and just great views all around. I mean, look at this, spectacular. However, you're not even 100K into the race yet and uh, you've got some big downhills and then the highest point on the course, which we'll be climbing today, hopefully. So, uh, gotta save something for that. feeling pretty spry today but these views really help and uh, I'm only five miles in AK and and it's downhill so got a long day ahead of us but energy is feeling surprisingly good just trying to stay hydrated because it's hot Whew. look at all these flowers hey guys hey it's all right I'm vegan it's okay Vegan, me vegan. Oh, I shouldn't be off in here. I went off the wrong way. I went off on the cow pen. It's okay. Don't charge me, please. I'm gonna stay up here on the trail. To see my friends, the cows, though. They are a bit smelly. Maybe as smelly as me, though. Not a bad view, saving that for the grand, but yeah, look at that. We go down to this valley, I think we drop pretty soon. Gotta find that. There's an aid station down there for the big climb up the Grand Col Foray, but a little worried. There's some clouds up on the mountain. 
All right, so this turn is it. Hairpin turn to the left, dropping down into the valley. Short, steep descent. Always a theme of the day. My friends, the greatest of all time. Are you guys mountain goats? You domestic goats. You guys have a good day. You stay good. All right, so I believe the aid station's somewhere on this road here. Before we start the climb, uh, I gotta go find the trail now. Oh yeah, this climb's gonna be rich. All right, up to the highest point on the UTV course. High altitude climb. The top is the border from Italy to Switzerland. Funny story on this climb. In uh, 2017, when I did finish, I was with fellow American Ryan Gelfi at this point. We're actually maybe a mile past the aid station there. Both feeling really rough. Weather was horrible. Couldn't see, it was cloudy, it was rainy, it was cold. We're both having a tough day, thinking about dropping out. And uh, we both decided to stop, put on our rain pants, trousers, basically all our layers of gear, because we're going so slow and it won't get cold. And we get pretty far up here. And I tell Gelfie, come on, Let's go to Champagne Lock and drop out together. At least make it that far, right? And Gelfie just says, I'm gonna stop right here. And I was like, dude, this is not a good place to drop out. Like, if you're in this remote valley, I guess there's road access, but you must have had a long, long uh, car bus ride back to Chamonix uh, at this point. Whereas I pressed on to Champagne Lock very slowly and eventually finished barely, thanks to Sandy's crewing kelp. But look at this waterfall, holy moly. See, I don't see things like this. All right, gotta see the battery. Excited for this climb though, because like I said, when I did it, it was snowing and there was no visibility, so I didn't get to really see a view off the top. Let's get up there. So I guess this is the top of the Grand Culfre. I didn't recognize it because it was in the fog and the storm last time, but there are some higher peaks that look pretty cool like to go up and explore, but uh, have a little break here. It's the valley we came from, and I guess the trail that goes down is gonna be over here, crossing the border uh, into Switzerland. So that'll be a fun little descent to uh, La Fouli, I believe. I brought this special treat over from the US, Avery IPA. Gotta represent highest point on the UTMB course. Drink it now. It only foamed up a little bit. Uh, it was a little, not super ice cold, but uh, gonna have some chips of that too. Enjoying the views and Avery IPA. So, this downhill actually starts off pretty mellow and buffed out. Funny story though, my race was really going downhill at the 2017 UTMB. And at this point of the race, coming down, I decided that running was too hard, going down this. Then I decided walking was too hard. So then I stopped. Then I decided standing was too hard. So what I did is actually lay down on the side of the trail. Oh, we got a runner here. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. What? For you, for you. Yes. Good, full out. Very nice. Very Olympic today. By UTMB. Yeah! <laughs> no. Are you training for... Uh, you must be a runner. UTMB? You no. have a money pose. Uh -huh. Romainard, tour, five uh, jours. Okay. okay. So I got some uh, candid shots, thanks to my runner friend up there. Some of this downhill, he's crushing it with a heavy pack on too, so. It's a bomber of a downhill. It's a bit of a hairpin turn back there at, uh, well, I guess it was a refuge, but I'm not sure if that was an aid station. 
So quite a few running groups. Really cool, they pointed me in the right direction because this was a very obscure trail. Uh, and Lafouli, there was a sign for Lafouli pointing the other direction, so super confusing, but first time seeing this uh, with good visibility and it is beautiful. Look at these flowers. Holy smokes. the weirdest thing I don't remember this section of the course at all like it's very remote there's not really any hikers over here um, and yeah I must have been totally blackout during the race at this point I was hurting so bad I, all I remember is coming into La Fouli aid station and just sitting there and Brian Powell of Iron Fire was there and I told him I was gonna drop out there and he was like don't drop out here and I was like fine I'll go to Champagne Lock and drop out. It's still quite a ways, but there's not a ton of climbing left. Uh, there is a bit of a climb up into Champagne Lock. Don't get me wrong, that is a climb. But we got a downhill into the valley here, and then we go up to La Fouli, I believe. But we'll see. There's a section in the woods that's cool. I remember that. All right, time to fly. Hey, are you enjoying the view today? Is that a no? It's okay, I'm vegan. You don't have to worry about me. You don't have to worry about me, I'm vegan. You guys have a good day. Enjoy your day. Have a good day. Don't charge me, please. All right, so we got a little road section here. I believe there's a aid station or refuge up here we'll restock at. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, I've run into so many people uh, every day actually that have followed the vlog or followed me on social media and I regret not filming them and giving them a shout out, but some even helped me film and uh, just wanted to say I really appreciate that and if I saw you today or yesterday, I uh, really can't thank you enough. So sorry I didn't get you on tape either. I would have liked to help. Maybe I could catch some people tomorrow, but thank you for following along and great seeing you out on these mountain trails running and training and we've got people training for any service, any distance out here. So people from all around the world, it's really cool to see. So great, great saying hi and thanks uh, for talking to me. All right, we're gonna get some provisions here. I think the course is on the other side of the river, off to my left, so I might have to go back. All right, so at this cafe here, uh, just met this guy. What's your name? What's up, David? David from Canada. From Canada. And he just did the the longer race at, at the Verbier series, the 76K. So awesome! I like the hokas there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, great to meet you. We're gonna have a beer here, so thanks, man. Hey, Appreciate always it. Always good to be the pleasure of the master. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, heading out of La Fouli. Had a nice break there. Uh, great to chat uh, with a fellow trail runner. He's done some really impressive ultra marathon races. Uh, he started running five years ago, ultra trail scene. So thanks for the beer and the meal. Uh, but yeah, we're heading out on the town. I think we're going on the path right here. So in uh, 2017, when I did finish this, they actually made us stay on the road for part of the section because it was raining so hard and I think there was a flooding risk with the river. But usually you run along the river on a trail. So we'll see. So yeah, I'm just gonna follow these signs. I've run this seg segment before, it's in training, so uh, even though it's not what we did during the 2017 race, we were on the paved road, I'll take the more scenic route, even though it might be a bit longer with a bit more climbing. I always remember this corridor section, a little downhill through the trees. There's another town up here where it flattens out and a little bit more pavement road running as we go through this next town, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce because I'm gonna not pronounce it correctly, but I'll film the sign so people know <laughs> what town it is. It starts with an O. Alright, 
so we're a little over a marathon in for the day about 26.5 miles 43k and drop down there towards those buildings then weave up through the woods i believe you could see the edge of champay lock just off to the left of that mountain there so uh we'll end the day with a nice little climb through the woods hopefully get there by dinner time so i'm getting hungry again yep trekking poles are coming out again Woo. I climb up this oof duh greatest of all time. I remember these wood carvings. I think there's more of them up in the woods here on the trail. Wood carvings of animals. Really cool. So let's try to find some more. for the day just a little grunt up the hill get to our hotel so i believe the aid station is actually in a big parking lot like this on the edge of town and after you exit the aid station you run down into town and you get a good view of the lakes here we go beautiful It's all right. Don't mind me. You enjoy your evening swim. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, so I made this booking like over a week ago because it was at capacity. It's one of the more expensive places in town. Oh, I kind of got a lake view and a balcony. Look at this. So 30 miles on the dot for the day because of my little detours and for running back and forth filming that adds on some extra distance. So uh, yeah, I felt pretty spry today. Got here a little later than planned, but they're making a reservation for me at the dinner uh, restaurant downstairs. So let's shower and uh, get eaten. satisfying dinner uh, they had some that vegetable platter there with some chickpea pancake or something but got some extra bread because I needed extra calories um, but gonna sleep well tonight uh, really happy with the hospitality here at Hotel Du Glacier um, out in Champagne Lock so gonna sleep well this is the end of this vlog training for UTMB and uh, soft UTMB day three has been completed so Thank you so much for following along. Be sure to subscribe for day four. Starting tomorrow, we're going to run all the way to Chamonix. At least that's the plan. Hopefully we'll make it. Should be a little bit of a shorter day, but still a lot of climbing and more beautiful views, hopefully. So thank you again. Thanks for subscribing and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.